Yes. All right, so today we're going to be going through the June or May, however you want to call it, May or June 2009 paper. And of course, you know what module one start with? Module one start with differentiation, integration, and complex numbers. So this one right here started by saying, if y is equal to sine square 5x plus sine square 3x plus cos square 3x, find the dy by dx. Let's write it down. It tells us that y is equal to sine square 5x. Now look how I'm gonna write it. Instead of saying sine square 5x, you can write this as sine 5x all square. This is how we need to start practice writing sine square 5x before you differentiate. It makes it a lot easier. So it's sine 5x all square plus the next term was this cos square sine square 3x. You can write it as sine 3x all square. This is sine 3x all square. And then you have plus cos 3x all squared. And you need to find dy by dx. So to find dy by dx, we can differentiate. So to find dy by dx, what we would get is dy by dx is equal to carry down the power. So we bring down the two. We write the two right there. We subtract one from the power. That is then sine 5x. But then we multiply it by the derivative. We multiply it by the derivative of sine 5x, which is going to be cos 5x. <clears throat> then we multiply it by 5. That's how we differentiate that right there. All right, following that same pattern to differentiate sine 3x all squared. You know, you carry down the power to subtract one from the power, it becomes sine 3x. I don't like how that sine look. Carry down the power, subtract one from the power, multiplied by the derivative in this bracket, which is cos 3x. So multiply that by the derivative of the 3x, which is 3. We'll do the same right here now. We'll make it. Carry on the power, 2, say right, plus 2. Carry on the power, subtract 1 from the power to get cos 3x. Multiplied by the derivative inside the bracket. The derivative of cos 3x is minus sine. Then you get minus sine 3x. Then you multiply it by 3. Now, all we need to do now is simplify this. So we need this to look pretty now. So we need to simplify. Simplifying what this is going to work out to be is dy over dx is now going to be equal to 2 times 5 is 10. So that is 10. I can write sine 5x cos x. 
Then when you differentiate, when we simplify this, sorry, two times three is six. So they end up getting plus six sine three X cos three X. Oh, I left off the cos five X over here. Sorry, my apologies. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The cos five X right here. Then the plus, when we differentiate, when we simplify this, we get six sine three X cos three X. And then over here, so we differentiate this part with the end of get minus the three times the two is six. So this is six sine three X cos three X. And then this way you notice is that this cancel this. And so that part becomes zero. So it end up work out that dy by dx is just this right here. dy by dx is just 10 sine 5x cos 5x. That's dy by dx, nice and easy, soft. Dy by dx. Nice. All right, so this is dy by dx for the first one. Just three marks still, we're gonna do nothing yet. All right, the next one says y is equal to the square root of cos x squared. So y is equal to the square root of cos x squared. How are we going to differentiate that one? Y is equal to the square root of cos x squared, cosine x being squared. So the first thing you have to do is rewrite this in the form y equal to, you see the square root, write it as the cosine of x squared, and all of this is being raised to the half power. Right, change it from square root, man, put it as half. Then you're able to differentiate it and write that dy over dx is equal to, you carry down the power of the half, you then subtract one from the power of the half to get cos x squared, half minus one is minus a half, then we multiply by the derivative inside the bracket. When you differentiate cos, you get negative sine x squared, but then you have to multiply by the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. So what does dy by dx simplify to be? Well, if you observe 2x times the half, this two would cancel this two. So I make sure to use Berg and the color. Then in the numerator, what we're gonna end up getting now is one times minus sine x squared times x is just minus x sine x squared. That's what is gonna be in the numerator. And then it's gonna be divided by the denominator, which is the square root. The square root of cos x squared. That's how you'd write this the square root of cos x squared. That would be dy by dx. Nice, easy, soft. So that's dy by dx right there. No issues. All right, we're nice. All right, moving along. Now the next one say y equal, this is supposed to say x to the x. Dun, dun, dun. Greetings, Jonathan, greetings. All right, so we're just doing this 2009 paper right here. And you know how it starts already with differentiation. All right, so look at this one right here. We have y equal x to the x, and it's said to find dy by dx, right? y equal 
x to the x. So look at this now. If y is equal to x to the x, let's change the color. y is equal to x raised to the power of x. In order to differentiate this, we can't. What we're going to have to do is take the log of both sides. We're going to have to take logs of both sides to differentiate it, take log of both sides. So when we take the log of both sides, what we're going to end up get is ln of y is equal to the ln of x raised to the power x. That's how we do this. After we take the log of both sides, by rules of logarithm, we can bring down the power. So we end up can now say that ln x and carry down the power in front of it is x right here. And so ln y is x ln x. Nice. The next thing we need to do now is realize that now we can differentiate it. When we differentiate ln y, we get 1 over y. And then you always multiply by dy by dx. That's when we differentiate both sides with respect to x, right? So let's let them know in this line that what we did to get the next line was we differentiated now both sides with respect to x, d by dx. So we differentiate ln y, we get one over y dy by dx. That's equal to, we differentiate this as a product, u dv plus v du. So we keep the first x multiplied by the derivative of the second, which is one over x, plus we keep the second, which is ln x, then we multiply it by the derivative of the first, the derivative of x is one. Now what happened right here is that this x cancel with this x. That's just now one. So what we end up get is one over y dy by dx is ending up equal now to be, this look like one plus ln x. This is just one plus ln x. So what we can do now, Jonathan, is that we can multiply through by y. If we multiply through by y, so we multiply through by y, what's going to happen is y times 1 over y, that will cancel. So we'll just end up back with dy by dx being equal to y times the 1 would make this y plus y times the ln x would make this y ln x. That's y ln x. But then what was y? Y was x to the x. Oh, y was x to the x. Y was x to the x. It's so nice. So what we end up saying is that dy by dx is x to the x plus x to the x ln x. That's how we differentiate x to the x. Differentiating x to the x, you get x to the x. Repeat. Uh, if, oh no, the x to the x ln x, if that could be simplified on any simpler, that's the final point. All right, this right here, you don't have to simplify it anymore. You could, because you could use laws of logarithm now to actually bring this back up here to write this as x. Write it as ln x to the x to the x. But why would you want to write it like that? Leave it as this. Make sense? Yes, sir. Yeah, man. We don't need to try to be dilly dally no more. Just leave it right here. All right? So we'll leave that as that right there. So that's how we differentiate x to the x. We take the log of both sides first. Always remember that when you say once x, the unknown is in the power, you take the log of both sides. Once x is in the power, we take the log of both sides to differentiate. All right? It's a repeat that. Once x is in the power, we use the log of, to both, of both sides. We take, log, we take the log of both sides before we differentiate. Once x is in the power. All right, sir. All right. Nice. All right. So that was a nice little differentiation question there. All right. Now, this one is a nice little proof as well. Part B, you know, it says we're supposed to, given that y equal cos inverse of x, 
and they tell us that where cos inverse of x is between zero and pi, prove that dy by dx is minus one over the square root of one minus x squared. So they give us that y is cos inverse, prove. So we know this is true already. We know this is the rule. Everybody knows this is the rule. Say so when you differentiate cos inverse, this is where you get. Now, now we're going to prove it. This is how we do the proof now. Y is cos inverse of X. So to do the proof, you start by writing down what they give you, right? Y is cos inverse of X. Now look at this. If Y is cos inverse of X, if you take the cos of both sides, take the cos of both sides, you'd end up get cos Y is equal to just X. You might say, sir, what happened to the, what happened to cos inverse? I'm gonna show you something with the calculator, all right? So look at this right here with the calculator. If I were to show you this in my calculator, I'm gonna show you something with cos. Let's say this is cos inverse of, I don't know, a half, right? Cos inverse of a half, look at this. I get 60. If I were to take the cos of cos inverse, I promise you I'm just going to get a half because cos cancel cos inverse. Cos cancel cos inverse. See there? I just get half. The cos cancel the cos inverse. All right? So when we take the cos of both sides, the cos cancel the cos inverse. All right? So just to write it in words, what we did, we take the cos of both sides. So the cos cancel the cos inverse. So we end up get cos y equal to x. Now, if cos y is equal to x, now we're able to differentiate both sides with respect to x. Now we can differentiate and say that d by dx of cos y is equal to d by dx of x. So we need to differentiate both sides now. Now differentiating cos y, we're differentiating y with respect to x. When we differentiate cos, we get minus sine y. But using implicit differentiation, we know that anytime you're differentiating y with respect to x, you have to multiply by dy over dx. And then when we differentiate x, we get one. So my apologies for putting one right here. This should have been X I already differentiated in my mind. That should have been X. Or we'll differentiate X, we get one. Cool. So if we divide true by sine Y or maybe minus sine Y, that would imply that DY by DX, this is DY by DX now, DY by DX is now just going to be equal to minus one over sine Y. That's what we get when we divide two by negative sine y. All right, we're almost done, but we're not quite. Now, remember what we're trying to prove. We're trying to prove that it is minus one over the square root of some things there. So now in order to get rid of the y, we need to find an expression that we can link back with x. So let's look at this now. Recall what we'd have learned from unit one. The sine square of the variable y plus the cos square of the variable y is equal to one. So if we were to transpose and make sine y the subject, what we're gonna end up see is that sine square y is equal to one minus cos square y. We know that identity. And then if we are to square root it, if we're to square root it, sorry for my poor handwriting, all right? So what we end up getting now is sine y is equal to the square root of one minus cos square. That's sine y, the square root of one minus cos square y. But, 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 but look at this. We said that cos y is x. Cos y is x. We said cos y is x. So we can plug in cos y right in here, because cos y is x. So that means that sine y, that means that sine y is now going to be equal to the square root of one minus x 
square that sine y, the square root of one minus x square. Once we get this now, now we can plug sine y being the square root of one minus x square in this formula now. Now we can plug in that right there. And so finally, to finish it up, let's finish it up over here. All right, so finally we can conclude that dy by dx is equal to minus one over sine y, but sine y is the square root of one minus x square. That is sine y. That's sine y, and so then that's the derivative of cos inverse. That's the proof of it. All right, that's how we prove it. Easy, soft. So just the takeaway. The takeaway is if you're proving the sine inverse, tan inverse, or cos inverse, if it was to prove that for y equals sine inverse x, what you do is take the sine of both sides. If it was y equal tan inverse x, you take the tan of both sides. Then what you do is implicit differentiation. Then once you get dy by dx, it's gonna be in terms of y. You're gonna then look for an identity that you can use to write back that y strictly in terms of x. So we had to use this because we observed that sine of y could be this, and then we can replace the cos y with x. We do the same thing for sine and the same thing for tan. Easy. I see it, sir. I see it. it, it, see right. it. So you see it now? Cool? Yes, sir. Let me see it now. Nice, 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 nice. All right, nice. All right. Now look at this now. One nice little question. I like this one because it asks for second derivative and this came on the mock exam that we had a little bit of issue with second derivative of parametric. So I'm happy it is here. So we see it's there. So it says that show that dy by dx is the square root of one plus t over two. And it gives you that y is, y is one, the square root of one minus t, is this one minus t? One minus t. Oh, also, like that? one plus is a plus answer. This, this, oh, this oh, is oh, plus. Oh, oh, y, oh, y, oh, y equal the square root of one minus t. All right, let's go with one minus t. All right, so y is the square root of one minus t and x is cos inverse of t. All right, so y is equal to the square root of one minus t and they give us x is cos inverse of t. And then we need to show that dy by dx is gonna be equal to some expression there. So first thing, before we even look at what we need to prove is find dy by dt. So to find dy by dt, the first thing we have to realize is that the square root of one minus t is really to the half power. So we carry down the power. Remember square root is to the half power. So we carry down the power half, we would then subtract one from the power, which would then make it one minus t. To the half minus one is negative a half. Then we multiply it by the derivative inside the bracket of negative one. That's dy by dt, not dx dt. So now all we need to do is just write this as one expression and so that dy by dt is going to be minus one over two times the square root of one minus t. That's how we simplify it. Always write it back in a third form. All right, so this is now our dy by dt. Now we need our dx dt. So our dx dt is, we're gonna differentiate this right here, dx dt so differentiating dx dt we just realize that when we differentiate cos inverse we get minus one over the square root of one minus x squared so in this case it's going to be one minus t squared all right so this is what we have cool so now we need to find dy by dx so to put it in a different color, let's use burgundy. We know that dy by dx 
is always equal to dy by d it's dy by dt yeah let me fix it this is why i keep putting x here so dt 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 so we know that dy by dx is dy by dt multiplied by dt dx all right nice so what this always work out to be is that this is going to work out now to be dy by dt which is this which is minus one over two times the square root of one minus t square multiplied by dt dx if it's been multiplied by dt dx this is dx dt so dt dx is really you flipping this so really multiplying it by the square root of one minus t square over negative one because this is dt dx this is dx dt so dt dx would be the flip of this we have to flip this in order to get dt dx all right always remember dt dx is one over dx dt so this is going to be our expression for dy by dx let's simplify this now i'm going to bring it all the way over here just for more space simplifying this we're going to have the square root of this divided by this oh where this square come from get rid of that so what's going to happen now is we have the square root of also we can see that the negatives cancel this minus one cancel this minus one so what we end up left back with is just now overall one big square root of well let me not say one big square root yet it's actually going to just be the square root of one minus t square over two times the square root of one minus t so it's one minus t square over one minus t and this is being square rooted as well and put back it to put back it to right here so and that's a fraction so it's really one over two the negative one then cancel the negative cancel the negative now we see this now what i'm gonna do is factor out my half factor out that one over two and forget it for now just forget it that's not important what we're gonna do now is simplify this the square root of a over the square root of b can be written as the square root of a over b so we're square rooting one minus t square divided by one minus t. Ah, we're square rooting one minus t square over one minus t. Now what this is gonna work out to be is one over two being multiplied by, now one minus t square, remember is a difference of two square. That is one plus t times one minus t. Oh, much so nice and easy. Yeah, man, that is one plus t over one minus t being divided by one minus t. Guys, we can't forget anything, a difference of two square. And this is all being square rooted. So guess what the up now? As we can clearly see, one minus t cancel the one minus t right here, so. Yeah, yeah, then they cancel. And so finally, we end up that dy by dx will just be equal to the square root of one plus t over one, which you can write just as the square root of one plus t over two. That is all you do this proof right here. This would be dy by dx. So that's the proof. We will take it out there, yeah, yeah. All right, no problem. All right, so the only trick with this question right here is that usually what we do is just go straight away and put the division, put dy by dt over dx dt. Instead, write it as dy by dt multiplied by dt dx. So we have to flip dx dt. And then when we're doing our division, we have to realize that we have to use thirds to write it as Instead of writing the square root of A over the square root of B, what we have to do is rewrite it now as one big square root and factor out the constant. All right? 
Once we factor out the constant, we use difference of two square to get our proof. All right. All right. Greetings, Sherry. Greetings. All right, let me know when we finish writing. Finish right? Oh, yes, sir. All right, nice. All right, that would be that now. Then it says, hence, find d2y by dx squared. Now, this is something that for some reason, many persons have difficulty remembering. Now, what we always have to remember, we always have to remember it, we always have to remember it. This is d2y by dx squared. We're breaking it down, breaking it down. d2y by dx squared is equal to d by dx of dy by dx. It's d by dx of dy by dx. But in our case, dy by dx is not in terms of x. dy by dx is in terms of t. So in this case, what we're going to have to rewrite it as d2y by dx squared is actually now d by dt of dy by dx. But then we have to multiply it by dt dx. You're going to see why. I'm going to make it make sense when I write it out. It's dy d by dt of dy dx multiplied by dt dx. All right, I'm gonna make it make sense. I'm gonna show you what happens. Now look right here, dt dx. All right, now look what happened right here. This dt would cancel this dt in multiplication. Then d times one would give you about the d and one times dx give it back the dx. So this equation makes sense, but we absolutely cannot differentiate y in terms of x when y is written in terms of t. So what we have to do now is first we have to find d by dt of, we just found dy by dx, dy by dx is the square root of one plus t divided by two, that's what we got for dy by dx. And then what we have to do now is multiply that by dt dx, where dt dx, we said dt dx was, dt dx was the square root of one minus t squared over negative one. Rewriting that now, so dt dx was minus the square root of one minus t squared. Instead of putting it as over negative one, just put the negative one on the inside. Just put the negative on the inside. So now we need to differentiate this. To differentiate this now, what we would get is, carry down the power, square root is really half. Carry down the power, half times half would make that be a quarter, right? Let me do that slow again. This square root, can be rewritten as being raised to the half power. That square root can be rewritten as being raised to the half power. So what we do is carry down the power half to get quarter, subtract one from the power to get minus half. So we'd end up get one plus t to the minus half. One plus t being raised to the minus half. And then all of this is multiplied by dt dx, which is minus the square root of one minus t squared. Now the question said, simplify your answer as far as possible. So that means if you leave it like this, you get two out of four. You need to simplify your answer. To simplify your answer, anything with minus is in the denominator. The four is already in the denominator. 
this part is really over one in the numerator. So this is really going to be minus the square root now of one minus t square over, it's then going to be four times the square root of one plus t, four times the square root of one plus t. We're gonna do the exact same thing again and we're gonna rewrite this now in terms of one square root by factoring out minus a quarter, write it as one big square root. And this can now be written as the square root of one minus t square over one plus t. One minus t square over one plus t. Now one minus t square over one plus t, this is really the difference of two square. So one minus t squared over one plus t, that would reduce to just be minus a quarter of one minus t squared over one plus t, gonna leave it back with one minus t, so it's minus a quarter, the square root of one minus t. If you wanna know how, let me write it out. Recall, let's put it in like a box up here in sort of a different color. One minus t squared, remember, is just the difference of two square again. That is one plus t, and it is being multiplied by one minus t. And then this part right here is being divided by one plus t. So if you divide it by one plus t, you divide over here, so by one plus t two. And when you divide the two of them by one plus t, this one plus t cancel this one plus t. So one minus t square over one plus t is, this, is one minus t. So this would be d2y by dx squared. It's that easy, soft. All right, nice. That's d2y by dx squared. All right. So we'll call it this. Sure. All right, nice. All right, so that's question one, all right? So this was a little bit different than the usual question one in terms of differentiation. This only had differentiation, or realize that differentiation can come in different ways. Remember how to differentiate x to the x, take log of both sides. Remember how to differentiate cos inverse. To differentiate cos inverse, if you're doing the proof, remember that you have to take cos of both sides first. All right? Nice. All right? All right, now on to question two. Let's go down. Question two now, integration complex numbers. This integration question now, it says, sketch the region whose area is defined by the integral of zero to one of the square root of one minus x squared. Now, as we were discussing in class today, there's a way out to sketch graph. You don't need to know how to sketch the square root of one minus x squared. But if you're gonna sketch the region, look how you're gonna do it. Look at this now. So we don't know how one minus x squared look. So what you're gonna do is bring out a table. Bring out a table, it's that easy. We want, we, want to sketch, we want to sketch the region how it look between zero and one. All right, so look what I'm gonna do. All right, so this is integrating between zero and one. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it up in a board. Just to follow the question, looking at the next part, gonna cut it up in five pieces, all right? All right. So this is X, this is Y, all right? And as we can see right here, we wanna cut it up between zero and one. So what I'm gonna do is since we're gonna cut it up in five pieces anyway, right? Later on, let's just cut it up in pieces from now to give them a sketch. So that would be one over five, two over five, Three over five, four over five. Two over five, three over five, and 
4 over 5. All right? This is what we have. So right here, so now, since this is what we have, remember the graph is 1 minus x squared being square rooted. That's y. This is y, by the way. All right? This is y. If you plug in when, when y is, when, when x is 0, sorry, when x is 0, what you get is the square root of 1. When you plug in 1 over 5, 1 over 5 squared is 1 over 25. 1 minus 1 minus 1 over 25 is 24 over 25. And so we're square rooting 24 over 25, which I don't know what that is, but I'll just write the root of 24 over 25. Root of 24 over the square root of 25, which I know is 5. That's root 24 over 5. When you put in 2 over 5, you get 4 square over 5 square, which is 25. 1 minus this would be 1 minus 4 is 21. So that would be the square root of 21 over 5. Now, notice that the numerator values are decreasing from 1 to a less value to a less value. Then 3 over 5, when I put in 3 over 5, 3 square is 9. 25 minus 9 is 16. The square root of 16 is 4. So this would become 4 over 5. When I plug in 4, I would get 3 over 5. Then when I plug in 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. So now I can easily sketch that reason. You see, we make it easy by plotting points. By plotting points, look how the graph look easy now. We can start with the highest y value is 1. So you can put 1 up here. And you're plotting between 0 and 1. All right? You don't need to give them these y value. But just to give them a sketch, when y is 1, we know, say, this is how the graph going to look. All right, this is a sketch, it's not 100%. Cool. So this is the y, this is the x, and this is your graph, y equal to the square root of one minus x squared. It's that easy. And then let's say sketch the shaded region or the area under the curve. So what I want you to do is shade in between here. You have a shade it for sure, say, this are the region they're gonna talk about. All right, this is the region that they're talking about. All right, the region they're talking about is between zero and one. All right, between zero and one. That's it, that's the region they're talking about. All right, that's the region. So sketch the region whose area is defined by this. We give them the sketch, nice. Now, look how this make it easier for us by giving them the sketch. By giving them the sketch, now part two say, Using trapezium rule, we need to find the area. Guys, look at this. By already sketching the graph and breaking it up into five trapezia, we already have our table. So using trapezium rule with N as five, they told us to use five trapezia in the next part. H is equal to B, which is one, minus A, which is zero, over N of five. 1 minus 0 over 5 is just 1 over 5. And so now you get these same x values. So we don't need to write over none of them already. We already did write them down from the sketch. All right? So this is the sketch in part 1. And in part 2, we can now just tell them that, let's call the integral i, right? Because this is what we're computing. We're calling the integral i. Because I can't bother to write out all of this. So you have to tell them you're calling it i. The integral from 0 to 1 of the square root of 1 minus x squared, I like to call it i. All right? Call it i. So I call it i. And so what we're saying virtually then is i is equal to, remember the formula, it's a half of h. It's a half of h, where h is 1 over 5. 1 over 5. And that is being multiplied then by y naught. y naught is 1 plus yn. yn is 0 plus 2 times everything in the middle. 
So it's plus two times everything in the middle. Everything in the middle is from here to here. These Y values are in the middle. All right, so that's root 24 over five, root 21 over five, plus four over five, plus three over five. Root 24 over five, plus root 21. I'm just gonna write it as one, one thing over five, root 21 over five, plus four, plus three. All right, we can, we can write all of them all being over five because everything is being divided by five. All right, it's supposed to be four plus three, but true, you know, the space is limited. It now the looks are proper. So we'll try to fix it. A little better, three. All right, so that is I. Now we're going to put that in our calculator and it's supposed to, it's supposed to work out to be this right here. So now we're gonna show them, let's take out our calculator and get the same thing now. So taking out our calculator, we're gonna end up saying that it is a half of H, H which is one over five, and that is being multiplied by, open bracket, Y naught, Y naught of one, plus YN, which is zero, plus two times everything is in the middle which was the root of 24 over five plus the root of 21 over five plus three over five plus four over five, three over five plus four over five. You just put all of that in the calculator. See it there? Blows and skirt, oh so nice. All right, we're well, sweet, see it there? 0 0.759, 0 0.759. And you get a whole of six marks for do that. Or literally, you know, do nothing. All right? So all of this, when you put it in the calculator, is 0 0.759. Five, nine. So that's what the integral of this works out to be. All right, so we'll prove it. Now, by the way, um, I'm lying. It's not equal to 0 0.759. We should put approximately equal to, all right? That's the truth. See there? You can write approximately with the two curly looking equal, or you can write it the way I said, right? Approximately equal to. All right, so this is this question. You get three marks for your sketch. You get six marks for this. All right, nice. Now the next part now, right here, so it say use integration by parts to show that I can reduce to this down here. And it's nine marks for that, integration by parts. Now, usually when you say one well, something with square root, you start think about you start think about um, when it's a square root, usually you think about either you substitution or rationalizing, but they tell you which method to use. They say use by parts. If you use you substitution, you're going to get the answer, but you won't get this answer. So you have to do it this way. Please listen to their instruction. Use by parts. It can do by sub, it can do by rationalizing, then sub, but please do it all them tell you to do it. Use by parts. So let's do it by parts now. So I'm glad they call it I like us. So finally, we're going to write down that I is equal to the integral from, from where? From, oh, they take off the limit and they just say so we're integrating the square root of one minus x squared dx. So if this is what we're integrating and you want to use by parts then you're gonna say, sir, you don't need U and DV for the by parts. Yes, you do need U and DV. So to break it up as the product of two functions, we're gonna put it being multiplied by one. It's actually one times itself. Oh, this is actually one times itself. But sir, I'm still not see it. Why go on this? So why you write one times itself? It is one times itself now because now we're able to use by parts. We're going to think of this as our U 
and this as our DV. You might say, sir, why the one as DV? Don't choose one as you because when you differentiate one, you get zero. And if you differentiate something and get zero, that can throw off the whole answer. So it's better you put the U as this one. Yeah, yeah, that's how we're gonna do it. So now using by parts, remember the by parts formula is this. I is equal to U times the V minus the integral of V D U. That's the by parts formula. Now, remember we're substituting, let's split the page to do our substitution over here. Over here, we're substituting u as, we're substituting u as one minus x squared, square rooted. Now, if it is being square rooted, it's really to the half power. Remember, we're really writing it to the half power then. And so to get du, what we're really saying is, Carry down the power half, subtract one from the power, so it becomes one minus x squared to the minus half. And then we're gonna multiply it by the derivative inside of this bracket. Let me write the minus half a little better. So we'll multiply it by the derivative in this bracket, which is minus two x. So following that, now we can end up simplify our du and our du is gonna work out to be this two cancels this two. So this is gonna work out to be minus x being divided by the square root of one minus x squared. That's what we're gonna end up get for du, minus x over the square root of one minus x squared, that is du. Now if this is du, now we can write down our dv. We said our dv we're substituting is one. Now if dv is one, v is going to be equal to the integral of one and the integral of one is x squared. Integral of one is x, sorry. All right, all right, so yeah. All right, I heard some guys say neck back today. Yes, yeah, so that would have deserved a neck back to write x squared, that's crazy. All right, so I is u times v now this is all u up here times v so let me put a box around u and v this is this is v and this up here is u all right so u times v is going to be x times u which is the square root this is now the square root of one minus x square minus the integral of v du the integral of v du so it's minus the integral of v times du is x times minus x over one minus x squared this is now how can i write this x times minus x is minus x squared but instead of writing minus x squared why not take the minus outside to make this be a plus and remove the minus right here yeah man remove the minus right there and put the integral of x squared over the square root of one minus x squared. Yeah, man, we can break it up like that. All right, this is how we can break it up. All right, as the integral of x squared over the square root of one minus x squared. <laughs> All right, now guys, you just hear me laugh, but you're probably saying, sir, what's going on? Because this don't look like we can't integrate this at all. You might think to do another substitution. You might think to do all sorts of something. But guys, this is, I showed the unit one boys them this again. This is now called manipulation, algebraic manipulation. All right? So forget me putting the minus right here. I'm going to ignore that back. I'm going to put back the minus right here. And I have a very good reason for that. Because I observed something, guys. I realized that in the denominator is one minus x squared, right? And there's an identity that pops into my mind straight away. If you're dividing a by the root of a, what's a divided by the root of a? a over the root of a is just root a. Yeah, man, a divided by the root of a is just root a. So, sir, how does that link to this? Now this link, it link now because look at this. If I were to just add one and subtract one, it might say, sir, what are you doing? 
just follow man, just wait. If I add one and subtract one, then I could rewrite this part now as the integral of the part where I add one, I put it as one minus x squared over the integral of, over the square root of one minus x squared. And then you see the part with the minus one right here, I can separate that as another fraction and write minus one over the square root of one minus x squared. Oh, we see that? That makes sense? This makes sense? So, so why we want to get that? Why we want to get that? No, this is why we want to get that because I just showed you this, that A divided by the square root of A is the square root of A, don't it? Don't it? Don't this make sense? This a over the square root of a is the square root of a. Meaning, if you divide three by root three, you're supposed to get root three, don't? Right? If you divide yes, three by no good. No, you no, you can ask me why. So why do we want to get it in this form? Because if you're integrating something of this form, u substitution will not work. But if you can reduce it from a over root a to root a, then you can integrate the root a part easier. Yes, yeah, so if you have one minus x squared over the square root of one minus x squared, that look hard to integrate. But if we divide it to just write the, the integral of the square root of one minus x squared, that can be easier. So my old aim right here, let me put the add one and subtract one in a different color. All right, it was this will end up getting. Let me put it in a different color. Add one and subtract one. By adding one and subtracting one, and then I group this part as one fraction to write one minus x squared. Then I break off the another part as minus one over the square root of one minus x squared. By doing that now, guys, I realize that I can integrate this part easier because one minus x squared over the root of one minus x squared is, what is this now? This is like a, a over the root of a. So what would this part work out to be? Just minus the integral of, what would this part work out to be? Um, one minus, minus, x. minus x squared. The square root of one minus x squared, good. No, guys, the square root of one minus x squared is I. Yeah, man, I that we that try to get back. So look now, this will make it easy. Because this is now the square root of one minus x squared minus the integral of the part here now, which is one over one minus x squared. Now, guys, we know what this part is. Integral of one over one minus x squared is sine inverse. So we don't even have to worry ourselves. Yeah? So that is why we wrote it in that form, by adding one, subtracting one. Now guys, always be aware, in pure math, you might have to end up, add one and subtract one. You might have to multiply by two and divide by two. I don't know if you notice, you have to be aware of those little manipulation skills. You have to for pure math, rationalizing, multiplying by this over that. Be aware of these skills to get what you want. You have to know how to manipulate to get what you want, all right? In maths, you have to know how to manipulate to get what you want, all right? So this is what we're going to end up get. And now what we're going to just do now is we're going to substitute this integral right here as i. This part is i. The whole of this is i. This is i. Yeah. So we can relax a little. So now we can end up telling say i over here, so now to finish it off, we can tell them i is equal to x times the square root of 1 minus x squared. They will put now minus i, because the part there now is just minus i, and they will write minus the integral of this, and you're done. That's what they did one with show. Minus the integral of 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. For some reason, I just feel this question gonna come. I just feel this gonna repeat, so I want us to fully understand this principle. All right, so that's how we will do this question.
Did, was this what they want us to prove? Let me see. All them have plus here, so let's look all them have plus there. So why they have plus? We have minus. Oh, yes, when you're expanding this minus, the minus and the minus, make this part would have become plus. Yeah. All right. Nice. So we'll get what them want to prove. So we'll write shown. All right. So now this is shown. Nine marks that to do that. I want to do nothing. Right? We really not do nothing. All we do is add one and subtract one. Imagine that. A escape mat's gone to adding one and subtracting one. I'm wearing white shirt. Come on, man. Nice. All right? So that's this part right there. All right? Let's look at the next part we're saying. The next part we're saying, hence, we're supposed to deduce that I is equal to this formula right here. End up deduce that I is this formula. All right? So let's deduce that I is that right there now. So now, this was I, but now we end up have I equal this right here. So let's write down back what we have I equal to. So I'm going to clear this. Writing down what we have for I now is we have that I is equal to, I is equal to X times the square root of one minus X square. Then we'll have it minus I plus the integral of plus the integral of one over the square root of one minus x squared. This is what we have for I, all right? This is what we have for I. So now what we need to do is we need to bring all of the I's them on one side, bring over this minus I over here to make it, make it become two I. So two I are gonna end up now equal to x times the square root of one minus x squared. And then what we have to realize is we have to recognize that the integral of one over the square root of one minus x squared, recognizing that part is sine inverse. So that part is sine inverse of x. And then once you integrate, you know, say supposed to add your constant plus c. You add your constant c. Then we're gonna divide both sides by two. We're going to divide both sides by two and divide both sides by two. And now we get the formula because now this two cancels this two. So what we end up getting now is I is equal to X times the square root of one minus X square plus sine inverse of X plus the constant C. sine inverse of x plus the constant c, and this is all being divided by two. All right, nice. So that's how we end up getting the formula for i. All right, so that's that. Nice. Two marks, that's still, that's just two. All right. Now you might wonder, sir, why didn't put plus C out here? So, right? It don't matter. You can leave it like this, or you can put the plus C out here. So, because C is just a constant. C is just a constant. C is just a constant. That don't matter. All right. C is just a constant. So you can write it as you can really separate it. Maybe you want to call this C1. And then you can separate it in two different fractions to put that, remove the C1 and put plus C1 over two, and then tell them say C1 over two is C. It don't matter. They give you a full mark if you still put plus C over two, because C is just a constant. C over two is still a constant, C is just a constant. All right? Now this part says hence, Find the integral from zero to one of one minus x squared. Hence, meaning you're gonna just substitute in from zero to one in this right here. 
that's all hence mean all right so hence just means eh, what we're going to tell them now is that the integral from zero to one of the square root of one minus x square using the ends now we're just going to plug in the limits as zero and one so it's just going to be equal now plugging in the limits remember we said it was x times the square root of one minus x square plus sine inverse of x and this was being divided by two sine inverse of x divided by two and this is from zero to one now let's plug in one first when you're going to plug this in a calculator please make sure you calculate it in radians how do you know it is in radians well looking at this from you see a one between zero and one clearly a radians right there's have to be radians once you say algebra and trick together there's a 95 percent chance it's radians so put the calculator in radians so we're going to put it in our calculator all right so let's put in our calculator so it's gonna be we're plugging in the one first so it is x which is one times the square root of x is one so it's one minus one squared that's really sad that i'm really plugging in that plus sine inverse of one sine inverse by the way i didn't put my calculator in radian so let me set it up put it in radians plus sine inverse of one close that bracket and this is being divided by two so when i put in one i end up get hmm why get that plugging in one right here one minus one is zero one times zero is zero plus sine inverse of one. Why not give me sine, sine inverse of one? They divide that by two. Yeah, pi by four. So I never want to give me the pi by four. So we'll plug in one, we get pi by four. Then we'll plug in the zero. What we're going to get now is when you plug in zero, you're just going to get zero. You're just going to get minus zero when you plug in zero so the answer is pi by four all right pi by four that's the final answer pi by four now one quick thing i want to show you guys is look at this the exact answer is pi by four but remember from the previous part of the question we did end up get say the answer was 0 0.759 if you were to take out your calculator and look at what is pi by four and what is 0 0.579? Yeah, I realize that basically are the same thing, right? 0 0.785 is pi by four. This is the exact answer. The approximated answer with trapezium rule is this. So what I'm trying to say is trapezium rule is very accurate, all right? It's very accurate. Now it says, hence, last part of the question now, hence, use the result in part B and C to find an approximation to pi. It says using the result, find an approximation to pi for two marks. It's very easy. So what we're gonna do now, guys, is in order to use our approximation now, what we're gonna say is from the previous question, from part one, we work out that this was approximately, let's not write it in the same line. So for the last part, part C, we worked out that all of this integral, we worked out that i, which is equal to pi by 4, we worked out that all of this is approximately equal to 0 0.579. So to find an approximation of pi, we multiply 2 by 4. And so pi is actually 4 times, well, not equal to, it's approximately four times 0 0.759 that's going to give you the approximation of pi 
4 times 0 0.759. You put that in a calculator. Or if you're really swift, you can do it mentally. I'm not that swift, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put in my calculator. 0 0.759. We'll multiply it by four and see there, guys. We we'll get 3.04. That's an approximation for pi. It's way off, but it's our approximation in this case. So pi is approximately 3.04. It's 0 0.1 off. All right, nice. So did we find this module well, this module one for 2009? It's one of the roughest I've seen. This is one of the roughest. That's why I tell you that we're gonna start going through them here. You think this one rough? Wait till we go through 2011 and 2012. Realize that we don't go through 2011, 2012. The one out of those two and 2005, them three they really want to target. 05, 11, 12. Like 13 going up, which is a recent one I said to focus on. I realized that because this year, the January paper was pretty much a repeat of 08 and 06, I just have a 